At first glance, it sounds paradoxical, doesn't it? After all, the legionaries, the army above all, was obliged to preserve and protect the state from any enemy. But strangely enough, it was the army that led to the collapse of the once greatest state, which she herself had created for centuries. It all began when the army became professional. Previously, there had been a conscription of young men in the event of warfare, and this system worked quite well up to a certain point. The important point was that a soldier, once discharged from the legion, did not move to another class, he remained a vintner, potter, or whatever else he wanted to be, but not a soldier. This was changed by the reforms of Gaius Marius. After Rome had suffered terrible losses as a result of the war with the Cimmerians and Teutons, the army began to recruit everyone, and in the process of training instilled in them the skills of combat and discipline. This is how a special class of population emerged, the legionaries. Thanks to the reforms, Rome succeeded in its expansion, expanding its borders relentlessly. Gaul, Syria, Egypt, Greece, and many other states were crushed by the ruthless Roman military machine. Rome was growing, so more and more legions were needed, and there was no shortage of volunteers. This is when the first stirrings began to arise in the soldier milieu. The fact that each legion identified itself with a particular commander, for which soldiers were ready in fire and water, and the commander generously shared the spoils with them. All in all, there was a kind of symbiosis, but the distant senate could appoint anyone at any time, with no regard for the opinions of the legionnaires. That's why the legions destroyed the Republic, bringing to power Caesar, beloved by the soldiers. But that was only the beginning. From the time of Nero onward, everything went wrong. The legions became more and more involved in politics, overthrowing and elevating emperors one by one. It often happened that the future ruler did not want this, but the soldiers simply forced him to do it. For example, Vespasianus Flavius simply threatened to kill him if he refused. The Praetorians were not lagging behind, as they staged a series of palace coups. A stable political system was out of the question. At the same time, it cannot be said that the emperors did not try to curb the willful soldiers. Septimius Severus dispersed Praetorians by distant garrisons. He incidentally began the practice of hiring foreigners in the legions, far from Roman politics. Diocletian continued this endeavor, he even moved his residence out of Rome. But in this case, the cure turned out to be worse than the disease. The number of foreigners in the army was steadily increasing. In fact, the Romans themselves were arming their own enemies. The proportion of the Roman population was steadily decreasing and the cities were declining. The population of Rome was reduced from 2 million people in 200 years to 100,000. The army had essentially become gangs led by warlords of varying degrees of ambition. Naturally, under such conditions, the preservation of the country was out of the question, and soon it happened. 